these two back-to-back -back episodes are a legit dream coming true for me not only because Sanji and Robin are my two favorite Straw Hats after Luffy but also the fact that I imagine this kind of content getting adapted by such big names and it actually became a reality. It's the perfect way to end the year for One Piece so this is gonna be my quick review slash animation breakdown of episodes 1044 and 1045 but just a small disclaimer here I usually do in-depth breakdown but this time it will also have a lot of fanboyism on the top of it. Let's start with 1044, newly promoted series director Yasunori Koyama handling one of my favorite chapters, the arc. The chapter was already perfect but somehow Koyama took it to even a level beyond. I think what I like about this episode and 1028 is the fact that Koyama took both of these chapters and made it the culmination of the character's growth throughout the entire series, which made the climactic moments more rewarding. It's not a Koyama episode if you don't enter the zone of the character's mind through exceptional presentation of their struggles and mental state. I'll go through some directorial highlights that I loved like the synchronization of Black Maria's punch, the bullying Robin endured and the bullet that hit Clover with a single tempo, or the horrifyingly great presentation of Demonio Robin following the creepy laugh. Narratively, this episode makes Sanji's moment even more in your face when it comes to how precious it was to Robin by paralleling it with Luffy's request in Ennius Lobby. Koyama's usual symbolic use of color sells each tone to its best possible presentation. Black Maria's maliciousness and anger with the red. Koyama's symbolic presentation also shines when Robin snaps Black Maria as he utilizes the surrounding environment to symbolize Black Maria's bones. Shadow, which is a clever way to avoid censorship. The OST choice was powerful but I'll have to say that the beginning here was too happy and I don't blame Koyama because I've always disliked the start of this OST but what follows that stinky part is awesome stuff. On the animation side the highlight was the legendary Naoto Shishida. His detailed art is perfect for such a moment, the gradual exaggeration in facial expressions made it really painful to imagine being in Black Maria's position, even though I wouldn't mind getting crushed by Robin, you know. I love the sense of weight too Young So gave to Robin's transformation, there was cool rotation by French animator Dorian Yoshikazu Tomita going ham on the fast paced action bits with amazing shading and fire effects, Fishman Karate was handled really well with Robin's arm being that symbolic line of liberation as she runs through it with Saul's quote in the background. Brooke's attack could have been better and I would have preferred if the episode ended with Robin's moment because it takes away from the sense of climax to have exposition after and it also lets the viewer distracted thinking more about the final scene instead. Now we move to something legendary, something unexpected. What if a Fire Force director makes his debut to take an off-screen encounter and make it THE Sanji episode with the help of Masami Mori on the animation direction and animators like Vincent Chansart on Rise of vs Fukuro Kuju? Sounds crazy, right? Sounds even delusional, but it exists and it's the final One Piece episode of 2022. It's such a powerful debut from Yuji Tokuno who did an exceptional job at directing and storyboarding the episode. When you can storyboard action well and have someone as reliable as Masami Mori to guide the animators, the results exceed imagination. The episode's pacing benefits from two main things, the chaotic nature of the chapter it's adapting which allowed a cohesive large-scale battle to take place everywhere and the brilliant original content that takes the wasted potential of the manga and does Sanji's character justice beyond imagination. Apparently the staff also lacked some time to spice things up as much as they could so I can imagine this is far from their full potential. The compositing looked stunning, Tokuno gave the battles a great setting with a large-scale and cool environmental elements almost felt like Sanji is trapped in hell fighting two monsters by himself. The intensity of the action is amplified with a unique OSD choice that is rarely used, a very dynamic action board that understands the characters hence you see the rivalry dynamic between king and queen, some of the best Sanji action on the series and it reminds me why I love his fighting style. It was quite lengthy too so every time I expected things to calm down it just kept going crazier. Mori's drawings are a delight to look at, his corrections are heavy but on the top of that he did his own key animation near the ending part, his attention to weight 
timing impact may have this one of the most visually polished One Piece episodes. I seriously hope we get more of the staff pair up for bigger action. Vincent Chansar did a minor scene on Raizo vs Fukurakuju and it was as expected extremely good. He drew so many Raizo clones with different expressions and we also got his classic background rotation animation. So yeah, we kind of manifested this fight turning this good. Overall, I'm beyond satisfied and next episode we're in for possibly some of the best action in One Piece. The legend himself, Katsumi Ishizuka, will be storyboarding Sanji and Zoro vs King and Queen. I'd imagine he gathered a good team to guide. Zoro and Sanji fans need to put their differences aside. For this monumental episode, the wings of the King will start 2023 with a blast. And as crazy as this year has been, 2023 will possibly surpass it. Thanks for watching, like and sub, see you next time.